Good day, old chap. I hope that you are doing fabtabulously today. So, you may have already seen, but of course we do already have a runner event that has started in Dragon City because along with all of the other spring into action events, we have this one along with Mr. Hibernation, which is a very cute dragon. You know, he's covered in flowers. He's got a cute little squirrel follower. Why would you not want to collect him at least? And so this is, of course, a standard runner event. And in order to get our hands on Mr. Hibernation, we're going to have to go through all of these different uh, I, I guess tiers of rewards first and we can get things like event currency from the roulette chest as you can see we've got food we've got frozen flowers we've got other dragons on the way there but since this is a standard runner event it's going to work more or less the same as usual most players will end up getting around about this area if they've been logging in for every reset somewhere around here depends on how well you do in every single one of your runner event runs but you'll see that I've collected all of the currency from this reset because this is an eight hour reset based event. But one thing that I do want to show you, because I have shown this before, but it is a very useful tool uh, because this is actually on the deep list website. And it is this here. If you go to the event page for this event, so, you know, this is the runner event island and you scroll down a little bit, you'll see this runner island pinwheel calc. And people always say, can I do this with my pinwheels? Can I finish off this event? Blah, 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 blah. Well, actually, you can just put this into this calculator right here. So it's important that you work out what your average score is in runner events. Because, you know, when you do a run, you might get 90, you might get 60, you might get 118 every run. And it's really important because that is the only thing that will really dictate how many points you're going to get. And so let's say someone gets an average score of 100 per run. And we'll say that they're, you can put in anything for these, but let's say current stamps. How many stamps do I have, for example? We've got 110 right now. So let's say we've got 110 stampy wampies and we've got zero pinwheels. So then it will calculate, uh, let's say zero actually, I think it breaks otherwise. So with the amount of currency, well, the amount of stamps that we've got right now, we will be estimated to get 200 or 2,200 pinwheels if we get an average score of 100 per run and then of course if we get 110 average per run that's going to up those peered wheels to 2420 so this is a really good way for you to work out how many stamps you can use to get a certain amount of points and so this is really useful if you gem this event because unlike some of the other events in dragon city you can actually reset all of these quests and gem them and basically get as far in the event as you possibly want. Of course, that is incredibly expensive, but for anyone that just has tons of gems, that's how they can get these really, really good rewards down here and even get right to the end, depending on how much of a whale they are. But this event is why I like it, because you can gem for the bonus rewards if you want them. And we do have insignias very, very far down the line. Do I think gemming that much just to get the insignias is worth it? Probably not. But if you're also wondering where I got all of this, all of these flight stamps from, it's actually from the current maze event because you've probably already seen him and already got the notification. But Mr. Mystic Blizzard's path, if you made your way through this blue path in the maze event, you would have got your hands on all of the flight stamps. And also we did get flight stamps in the ads yesterday. So that is how you can have over 100 flight stamps already, even though there's still three days left in the event. But the amount of stamps that you get for each quest is always going to be the same, 7, 5, and 3. So that's 15 per reset. And so 15 times 3 times another 3 days, that's how many more stamps we can get from this event normally. So we're going to need to keep collecting those, making our way through here. Of course, we've also got the Blooming Spring Reward, which is going to be free joke robes as well, which is really good. But in terms of the quests themselves, just in case you are confused or struggling with any of these, it's basically the heroic race um, tactics that you'd need to be using for these quests. You know, anyone that's done this event before, I'm sure it's obvious to you. But for anyone else, I also like to use the Deetlist website for this as well. So again, I like to use Ditlep for some events, but I like to use Deetlist for others, especially this runner event here. It's like if we just scroll, um, scroll in a little bit here, you'll see that it shows us the current mission set, which is Feeding Dragons, League Battles, and Breeding Dragons. Feeding Dragons is easy, level one, dragon. League Battles is just League Battles, and we do have an alliance chest for that on at the moment, so that should be a free low quest. Breeding Dragons is the only tough one there, and the way that you do it is 
basically the same as runner events. Uh, not runner events, heroic events. You'll see that I've been throwing my terror dragons in this singular ultra breeding tree just so that we can get this breed done. And that's how you do it. You just throw in two unempowered terror dragons. So let's ignore these two terror dragons at the top that have breeding perks because we're not going to be using those. We scroll down, we pop in our unempowered terrors, we breed them, then we do the eggs over and over again until we get the points. It is tedious. Same with the hatching quests. It's the same thing, except instead of putting them in there, you just buy terror eggs from the shop here and then you place them and then you get the points every so often. So those two quests, they are the most tedious out of these, but they are definitely doable. Um, it's just like heroic races in that sense. So that's that quest. We've also got collecting food, which I actually quite like. And you'll see that in my farms, well, I guess you can't technically see it, but trust me, in my farms, I've got like 12 hour food or one day food in there. And that just means that it's a guaranteed food item from my farm. So if you fill them all up with 12 hour food or one day food in a few of them, then you should be able to get those quests done. But what some people do is they'll just do half of their farms with the long timers and then the other half with the short timer food, the super short timer food, uh, what's it called, bluebells, right at the bottom. And then just in case they miss any of the collections for any reason, maybe they, they're like one off at least, then you can go and get the rest with bluebell bouquets. So that is what you can do for that food collecting quest, which is a really nice and easy one. And then hatching eggs, like I said, same thing. The only other ones that we've got on top of that are going to be collecting gold and then feeding dragons more often like that one. But Deatlist shows you all of the upcoming missions that are coming in and it gives you the little tiles and everything with like image files, which I find much easier to use than like Excel spreadsheets personally. I think it's a lot clearer to newer players as well. So I do highly recommend Deatlist for this run of event in particular if you are going to be doing the event and you want to know which quests are coming up i just think it's like super easy look it's right there we can see it and if you know what's coming up in events then you know whether you can you know breed some random stuff for a few hours or if you're gonna have to leave your hatchery and breeding dens open so it allows you to do more unique breeds even while the event's going on so like for right now we've got this one was breeding, next one is just going to be hatching eggs, so we'll need at least one of our hatchery slots open. But because that's going to be over quite a long time, we've got our 12 hour time skips, which means that we're going to be able to get some of these hatched and they're going to count towards the points as well. But if you don't have the 12 hour time skips at all, well, you're going to have to do it the good old fashioned terror way. But I'm going to be doing these, um, these runs in hibernation run uh, over time probably over the next couple of days mainly just because I don't want to have to use like 200 300 flight stamps all in one day because that is like the equivalent of self self killing or it makes me want to do that um so we're not going to do that um but at the very least get your hands on the gems and get the XL banquet boxes if you can which should be doable if you log in for every reset so that is my goal and you know there's some orbs of hibernation as well but Insignias would be wonderful, but you're probably going to need a jackpot on the ads or something if you want to get those. But anyway, I do wish you the best of luck with this runner event run. On top of that, we're going to have Arena finishing in a couple of hours time. I'm just in Masters 2 because I didn't want to go too high because, you know, I can't be bothered. Um, but at least we'll get the Master 2 rewards. We're going to have that um, the Alliance chest paying out soon, which is going to be wonderful. And then I guess we just continue on with our event collections and such. So for now, enjoy your day, my lovely, and take care of yourself. <laughs>